Wolf Industries Inc. is the only company making industrial plastic candle stamp shears in the United States. The company produces these scissors at their Wolf Indiana manufacturing facility in Columbus, Indiana. To make strong industrial strength, food grade safe shears, the team at Wolf Indiana employs some unique and proprietary heat treating processes to harden the blades while allowing the steel to remain flexible. Hello, my name is Caleb Sneed. I work for Wolf Industries and I was given the opportunity to tour the Wolf Indiana facility, meet the experts, and see the process of how these scissors are made. First, we use American-made stainless steel that comes to us in large coils. The coil is loaded and fed through a stock straightener into an oiler and then fed into the large press. A die is loaded into the press depending on the blade that's being produced. The press stamps blanks out of the coiled steel as it's fed through the machine. There's a chop section on the end of the die that cuts down any excess steel into small pieces that are then recycled with a local company. Once those parts are blanked, the press operator brings them to the wash station and rinses them in hot water and safety clean and then dries them in granulated corn cob. The blanks are then separated from the corn cob and taken to the straightener. The blanks are run through a straightener which flattens out any variances in the blade to a tolerance of 30 thousandths to get them prepped for the heat treating process. Now while I was at the facility, I interviewed David Vogel, whose family has a history of being involved in the scissors manufacturing business tracking all the way back to the 1690s. He explained to me the heat treating process that we employ at Wolf Indiana. This is the Wolf Die Quench heat treating system. The blade enters the heating compartment, which is flushed with dry nitrogen gas. The gas prevents decarburization while the part is at the elevated temperature. Contained within the heating compartment is a copper coil through which high voltage electricity passes, creating a magnetic field. As the field oscillates, the steel part will heat up rapidly. This process is known as induction heating and heats the steel by exciting its molecules much in the same way as a microwave heats food. After heating, the red hot blade is then crushed between two cool flat steel plates which rapidly cool it in a process known as quenching. The flat blocks ensure that the blades start the manufacturing process as repeatably accurate as possible. Following heat treating and quenching, the blades go into a special deep freeze which takes the blades down to negative 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Dry ice was originally used for this process and is the reason steel is still said to be ice tempered. This process allows for more uniformly hardened blades. Following this deep freezing, the blades will actually increase in hardness. After 24 hours, the blades are warmed back up to room temperature and then tempered. The tempering process involves reheating the blades to a specific temperature for stainless steels generally below 375 degrees Fahrenheit. This reheating removes some of the hardness but makes the blades less brittle and more flexible. This temperature is closely controlled because heating the blade too hot will cause it to soften too much. So this entire proprietary heat treating process allows the blades to harden to 58 on the Rockwell C scale, but then also be ductile enough that we can twist and shape the blade as needed. This creates harder, stronger, but more flexible blades than competing plastic handle shears. After cooling back to room temperature, the blades are then taken to the machine that will add a cosmetic grind to the surfaces that are not either a cutting edge or covered in a handle. It's grinding the leading edge and the back spine of the blade. From there, the blades are loaded into a vibratory tumbler to give the blades a nice shiny polish. The media is a three millimeter thick ceramic and we add an abrasive compound. As the blades go through the vibe, it rolls the contents towards the center while moving counterclockwise so it's got two motions going at the same time. The cycle runs for 16 hours and the compound starts out fairly abrasive but as it breaks down it gets finer and finer and ends up giving that nice mirror finish. 
This process also helps to remove additional burrs and radius all the edges. After unloading the blades from the Vibe, they are taken to a machine to add the outside face grind. The face grind helps to reduce cutting pressures by giving the scissors a thin edge so that they can slice cleanly through different materials. The filtration system on this machine is able to separate the metal grinding from the water. The water is then pumped and stored for later reclamation and the solids are able to be recycled with the rest of the metal scrap. Another cosmetic grind is added on the inside of the blade. This grind is dual purpose in that it helps relieve any additional sticking points between the blades. Two highly polished surfaces can stick together. Like for example, two wet planes of glass with suction to each other. So this grind will help polished surfaces slide easier. It's at this point that the blades become inventory. Wolf Industries sells lots of different handle types, colors, sizes, etc. that will all use this same blade. When a work order comes through, and depending on the handle size and configuration of the order, the blades are then etched with model numbers to correspond to the work order. The model number and Wolf logo are added to the steel using an electromagnetic chemical etch. Then the blades are washed again and dried using the same process shown previously. Next, to prepare the blades for the handles, the thumb blade is punched to add an offset and the blades have an adhesive added. This adhesive is dried on the blade but is designed to activate when the hot plastic is formed around the steel. This glue is a food grade adhesive formulated for a steel to plastic bond and it helps prevent leakage and bacteria growth under the handles when used in food processing facilities. The next process is to mold the handles to the blades. We re-grind and recycle all of our excess plastics back into the injection molder so that our scissor handles are a 50 to 50 ratio of recycled plastics to virgin material. After the handles are molded, the blades go back to the grinding room to have the cutting edge added. The grinder is adding a 35 degree bevel and slight radius to the cutting edge. This is the process where the actual cutting edge of the scissor is added. After all the blades have the appropriate cutting edge added, they are then sent to DSI Services for assembly. DSI Services is a local nonprofit organization that provides services and jobs to people with mental, physical, and emotional disabilities. They provide living options, job training, placement care, and support, and we're excited to be able to work with them on the assembly process of our scissors. Once the scissors are back into the shop, they go through the final steps of finishing, setting, and edging. These final steps are all done by hand so that every single pair of scissors that leaves the facility has been hand tested. These last steps usually consist of final handle alignment, adding additional set, a final edge grind, setting proper tension, and then test cutting on a couple different material types. The scissors are then shipped to Wolf Industries where they are stocked and sold to customers. Wolf Industries can also do additional finishes per the customer's request like blunting tips, curving blades, adding ball tips, and more. And the very last step at Wolf Indiana is water reclamation. The process to make these scissors uses a lot of water to help keep the steel cool during grinding, polishing, and cleaning. The waste water is stored in an underground pit and then pumped into a holding tank. The water is agitated and a flocking agent is added that causes the dirt, lubricants, soaps, and other suspended particles to aggregate, forming a flock. The flock settles, leaving good clean water at the top. The clean water is then safe to be pumped out of the tank and into the sewer system for further processing by the local water company. The solids that form are pumped and cleaned from the tank. Once the solids are dry, they will break down into dust. This makes them safe for disposal at the local landfill. By recycling the excess steel cuttings, regrinding plastics, recycling cardboard, and treating the water, Wolf Indiana is able to manufacture scissors with virtually no waste. We are also equipped to create all the molds and dies required for stamping blades and molding handles. 
So that's the story behind the cutting edge technology Wolf Indiana uses to create these awesome, food safe, industrial shoes. Thank you.